in this video we want to talk about innovation and give a general introduction to the idea of innovation in business. Innovation involves the application of creativity that is using knowledge and skills to achieve values in new ways. What this means is that innovation is it ranges from tweaking an existing process modifying it slightly introducing a new uh, way of doing the process or it could be quite a radical change it could be a, a fundamentally new technology brought to bear to achieve the objective of the business so it's creative thinking and it's the application of creative thinking it's usually associated with a new or a better way of doing work. It can be many things, for example the substitution of cheaper material in an existing product or a better way of marketing an existing product or service. So the idea of innovation is not confined just to production. We can innovate the way we work in the office. We can innovate the way we work in terms of our approach to marketing. Uh, we can vary the way we work. We can try to improve it. And that is an innovation. That's a newness. In general it's about doing things differently. I suppose more specifically doing things differently and more efficiently. In order for innovation to be successful it should be linked with customer demands through cost or price and the quality. The ultimate objective is to satisfy co uh, customers needs and their need is to receive the product at the cheapest possible price and the product should have a high level of quality, a high standard of quality. So innovation should ideally be targeted at trying to achieve these objectives. To innovate, to innovate efficiently uh, it requires insight into customers and markets, into what is possible and what is not and how to make things happen. And that's the idea of Burns, a famous writer in particularly in small business back in 2001. So to innovate effectively requires an insight into customers and markets. It, there's no point in innovation if it is not going to achieve something and what it should be achieving is better consumer satisfaction and perhaps also linked to that uh, a cheapness, a better way of doing it. So. To exploit innovation successfully it requires somebody to push it through a strength of character. It requires the ability to do it and it requires the resources, money. It requires, it requires all of those characteristics. It requires the idea. The idea is how to change something and make it better that's the innovative idea. It requires somebody to champion the change, to bring it about. And the management have to accept it and agree with it and relate to it and apply it. And of course there must be the resources to bring it about in the first place. Entrepreneurs hold a key to the innovation process. Uh, entrepreneurship is, is a separate subject and we're not going to get involved with it here. But entrepreneurs are these special people who come up with creative ideas, come up with new products and new thinking. Um, it's not possible to teach entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is inside the person and we can't teach people how to be entrepreneurs. There are many courses 
right around the the world and many books written on it but they can't really teach us to be entrepreneurs some people are entrepreneurs the vast majority are not but entrepreneurs uh, happen in all sorts of shapes and sizes the entrepreneur may be somebody who looks at a given process and thinks there is a better way to do this now we would consider that to be very small scale but it is entrepreneurial it's thinking differently it's being creative so there is an absolute link between innovation and entrepreneurship as I said entrepreneurship will be dealt with in different sort of classes Schumpeter, Joseph Schumpeter back well, back in the 1930s, um, some editions of his book obviously come out more recently, but um, he was a popular economist back in the 1930s. Uh, he's the one who probably we associate most, from an academic point of view, with this concept of innovation. Um, Schumpeter saw innovation as the driving force behind capitalism. It was innovation, the need to have newness. But he also saw that the new products, the new ways of doing things, would destroy the old products and destroy the old ways of doing things. And this he called creative destruction. It's creative destruction, it's destroying the old products, it's destroying the old methods of production, the old ways of thinking. It's destroying those and replacing them with something better. So it's creative destruction. And he really is the father figure of much of modern day thinking on innovation. So innovation can come in in many ways. For instance, it can come as um, the introduction of a new or improved good, which innovates the market. Consumers like newness and they like to see things in that way. Uh, Secondly, it, it could be the introduction of a new process. It could be in production, or it could be in the office. A new way of doing it, of doing the job, of uh, of completing the task. It might be it might be the introduction of technology, computers, and so on, or it may be just a different a different routing of the work, or different raw materials, or. Um, just a different way of thinking about the job itself which is the innovative idea. It could be opening up a new market that's the innovation. Perhaps uh, a market which was previously not being considered may now become uh, the focus of managerial effort and to that end it's it's an innovation, it's, it's a new way of thinking, it's, uh, it's bringing a new market into play. There may be new raw materials with advances in technology and new discoveries. There may be new ways of doing it. New materials replacing metal with plastic or replacing plastic with something else. Or There's always the chase on to do something better. By and large industry does not stand still. By and large managers are constantly on the lookout for a new way of doing it which will save money, it will save resources and it will give the consumer a better product. It may be a new type of organization. It may be restructuring the business completely and moving the departments around and changing the the organizational chart, changing who's doing what and where, and changing the sequence of production, changing the stores, changing the office layout. Could be just a, a, a reorganization. So innovation is very important for the growth uh, and success of a business. Um, many companies try to make innovation their culture. The culture is to change. The culture is to embrace modernity. 
to embrace modern ways of thinking, to embrace uh, change. And that is a part of the culture. The culture is to move on, to be creative, to look for needs that were hitherto not recognized and then to solve the needs, to supply the product or the service to satisfy the need. That has been creative. There are many, many examples of this. Um, many companies run schemes to ask the employees for new ideas and reward the employees if they come up with new ideas. There are suggestion boxes and mechanisms to suggest new ways of doing things in terms of the internal structure, in terms of the production process. Sometimes employees could come up with a totally new product related to the existing capital structure of the business and the capability of the business. They might come up with a new product or think about a new market. And in return the employee gets a reward but there's this ever push to satisfy uh, satisfy the quest for newness, for innovation. Innovation is one of the main contributors to economic growth around the world. It's it's getting it's getting um, it's 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 recognizing that markets are evolving and changing and growing, and it's participating in that process. Um, economic growth can happen because existing technology simply expands. There are more more sales with the existing technology. There's nothing innovative about that. But as soon as uh, the technology starts to change, the design of the organization, design of the product, the raw materials, uh, when that happens we have economic growth, we have change, we have development and perhaps new markets as I keep saying. It generates employment opportunities um, and it certainly helps with competitiveness. New technology, generally speaking, leads to cost reductions. That's why it's attractive. Um, there may be new employment opportunities for some, some who have the skills to operate in the constantly evolving environment. Some people may have skills which are outdated and outdated skills will not be successful, will not have an active role in a changing environment which is becoming increasingly complex. So workers have a need to acquire qualifications and skills and have updating. And this is one of the reasons why um, many industrialists talk about lifelong learning. It's not a question of going to college or to university and getting a qualification and sitting back for the rest of your life. It's a question of getting new skills on top of that and new ones on top of that and updating it continuously. So innovation pushes in this direction. It pushes businesses to be more competitive and it creates employment for the people with the right skills. The people without the right skills, the onus is on them to acquire the skills. An innovative idea for a product or service that has market potential should be protected. Uh, this is where industrial espionage and spying and cheating and stealing creeps into the story. Um, a good idea needs to be protected, otherwise competitors will get it and all the efforts of the company into uh, gone into designing the new innovative process would be lost. So there are protections that are available. They're not perfect because across international boundaries it's not easy to enforce them and some countries perhaps don't enforce them as strongly as others. But nonetheless protection is attempted to be applied in the following ways. First of all we have patenting or patenting as some people say. 
Uh, doesn't matter which way you pronounce it, I guess. It's patenting or patenting. Um, this means getting a legal right to make or use or sell an invention. So you invent something. You invent a machine that does something. You invent some mechanism to do something. Then you need to protect it. That is your idea. You need to protect the idea. And by getting a patent or a patent, by getting one, it becomes your idea legally. So if someone copies it, they are breaking the law. They have stolen. They have stolen your intellectual property. Because your intellectual property is the idea. So this is the legal protection that commercial ideas uh, get. It should exclude others from making or using or offering for sale or selling or importing the innovation. It should do. But as I said, across national boundaries it's very difficult to enforce this. But in principle that's what should happen. So the patent or the patent gives the inventor and possible future inventors the right to exclude others from making, using or selling the invention. So it's protected. So any effort put in to make some mechanism or some some gadget, some machine or to to vary something, to be innovative, any effort put in to be innovative should be protected in this way. Licensing is also a way that's used. It's used when uh, a patent owner grants a company permission to use the innovation or the patents. Um, if you've got a if you've got a patent on on an invention, you've invented something, and you have protected the idea, your cop your intellectual property is protected legally with a patent. Then you may license it to a business to make, in return for royalty fees. Um, so the inventor is rewarded. The innovative person is being rewarded for being inventive. And that's why copying is stealing. Copying a technology is stealing the technology. It's stealing somebody's idea. And if the ideas are not protected, then there is no incentive for inventors or innovators to change, to work, to modify, to develop. Which means we would have less invention, less innovation, and the world would be a poorer place. Copyrights is also the, the case that uh, if somebody writes a book or a manual or a film or a play or or simply does something in a in a, a technological way it writes out an idea or a set of ideas and it's useful this is useful to some people then if that is the case there is an incentive for them to copy and to stop them copying the work it is possible to copyright the ideas. Having said that, I keep going back to it, it all depends on enforcement. Some countries enforce the law, some countries don't see it as that important and there are always issues. So to be inventive is to make something. To be innovative is to be to apply it commercially, to take the invention and apply it commercially so as to get a return on it um, and the idea should be protected legally and I've suggested some ways in which this happens in the last slide or in the slide that's currently on the screen. That's about all we want to say at this stage about innovation. It's a very general introduction to the topic but nonetheless quite an important one. There are some references that uh, are potentially useful in this area. Um, if you want to stop the video and just make a note of them, you're welcome. In the meantime,
that concludes this video so thank you for watching